welcome back to this Further Maths Walking Talking Mock, and this is part two. We're on question nine. We've got some matrices here. Given that 3 minus 1, 2, 1, a, b equals b, a plus 1, work out the values of a and b. Okay, so we're going to do some matrix multiplication. Um, so when you multiply a matrix by a vector like this, you need to do... Um, how can I draw this? You need to do the first row, first column, times A, and then the, you know what, I, it's easier if I just do it. So you can do 3 times A is 3A, minus 1 times B is minus 1B, and then, by the way, this is like a vector here, and then 2 times A is 2A, and 1 times b is 1b. So when you times a matrix by a vector, you end up with just a vector um, with two values in it. And it kind of doesn't look like a vector, but this is one element, and this is one element. And that has to equal b a plus 1. So that means that this has to equal that, and that has to equal this. Okay, so we have two equations with two unknowns in each of them. In other words, we have simultaneous equations. Let's rearrange them so that they look... Um, how should I do this? I, I'm trying to think if I want to do elimination or substitution. I don't know. Um, let's just... Um, yeah, let's make them look like this. I'm going to take away B from both sides. And then this one, I'm going to take away A from both sides. Okay, so they look a little bit more normal now. Um, so I could double this equation and then do some... Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to times this one by two. Like that. And I'm going to add these two equations together. So let's... Let me just number these. That's one and that's two. I'm going to do equation 1 plus equation 2. 3a plus 2a is 5a. Minus 2b plus 2b is nothing. 0 plus 2 is 2. So a is 2 fifths. And then um, going back to this equation, a plus b equals 1 and a is 2 fifths, so b has to be 3 fifths. And then I could check that by substituting those into this equation. Um, so that would be 6 fifths take away 6 fifths equals 0. Yes, it does. So good, I got it right. Number 10. This is a sketch of the curve f of x. It looks like a cubic to me. For this curve, dy by dx is this quadratic. Yeah, so it, this will be a cubic then if it differentiates to make it quadratic. Um, work out the range of values of x for which f of x is a decreasing function. Okay. Um, now, decreasing function means that dy by dx is negative. Okay. Decreasing means that the gradient is negative, is sloping downwards. Okay. It's this bit. Because that bit's going up, that bit's going up, that's the only bit that's going down. So I know that it's going to be between two points, so it's going to be a sandwich. I can tell that from this graph. Um, but in order to solve that, um, well, there's two things we could do. We could, see here and here, they're the end points of our inequality. And I can see that they're stationary points. So I could find the stationary points of using this. And then I know that it's just a sandwich between those two. Or I could solve this quadratic as an inequality and write less than zero and solve it like that. Um, which is kind of the way I did it in class. So I think I'll do it that way. 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 has to be less than zero. All right. Um, the question is, will this factorise? 
Yes, it will. Because that's going to make 6, and that's going to make 2. So I need minus 6 and plus 2. Yeah, do you see what I mean? 3x times minus 2 makes minus 6x, and then that makes 2x. Minus 6x plus 2x makes minus 4x. Okay, so that means um, x equals um, thingy minus 2 over 3, and that's x equals 2. Um, so, just drawing a quick sketch of this quadratic. Those are the two roots of it, so 2 minus 2 thirds. It's a normal quadratic, it's positive, so it's a smiley face. And we want less than 0, which means we want below the x-axis, which means we want this section. Which means we need a sandwich, so we need x to be between 2 and minus 2 thirds. And it's not inclusive because this isn't inclusive. Because um, decreasing means strictly less than zero. It means negative, not including zero. Um, oh, that was part A. So there is a part B. Yes, there is a part B. Work out the equation of the normal to the curve at the point 1 minus 2. Give your answer in that form. Okay. Um, right, so let me just write out dy by dx again it's on the other page. Okay, so that was dy by dx. Um, right, we can find the gradient of the curve at this point by putting the x value of that into that. So let's do that. Um, dy by dx will equal 3 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 minus 4. 3, take away 4, take away 4, which is minus 5. Um, okay, so the, um, the gradient of the tangent to the curve is minus 5, but we want the normal, not the tangent. Remember, normal is just another word for perpendicular. So the normal gradient will be the negative reciprocal of minus 5, which will be 1 fifth. So I know it's y equals a fifth x plus c. And then we just need to substitute in a point um, that lies on this line to get c. So we'll substitute 1 minus 2. So minus 2 equals a fifth of 1 plus c. So c equals minus 2 and a fifth. So y equals a fifth x minus 2 and a fifth. And if you wrote that in decimals, that would be absolutely fine as well. Um, let me just see what the um, examiner's report says. So it says, question 10. In part A, many students did not appreciate that they were given the expression for the gradient of the curve. Right, okay, so what a lot of people did was, because um, they know that, right, decreasing function, the first thing you have to do is differentiate. Um, and they didn't realise that they already differentiated it for you. Okay, so they differentiated it again. Um, um, equating to zero to find the two x values of the turning points was required. Yep. Um, once the two values of minus two thirds and two were obtained, the sketch of the curve ought to have been sufficient for the range of values to be written down. It needed to say x is in the middle of the inequality, oh, not f of x. Okay, so some people wrote f of x here. Um, there were a significant number of non-attempts at part A. Okay, a lot of people just left it out. In part B, many students did not realise that to find the equation of the normal, it is necessary to work out the gradient of the tangent and then use the negative reciprocal for the gradient of the normal. Of those students who worked out the gradient of the tangent at x equals 1, many then forgot to use the negative reciprocal and proceeded to calculate the equation of the tangent instead. Students who obtained a fifth for the gradient of the normal often successfully went on to the correct answer, 
although working out the y-intercept proved a problem for some due to careless arithmetic. There were a significant number of non-attempts at part B as well. Okay, so this was a hard question um, by the sounds of it. This was a question that a lot of people struggled on. Um, so if you understood it and you think you can do it, then that's a very good sign. Number 11. Um, here's the graph of y equals f of x. It consists of a quadratic curve and two straight lines. Okay, yeah, I can see this bit's quadratic, and then that bit's straight, and that bit's straight. Define f of x, stating clearly the domain for each part. Okay, so this is one of those functions where it's got um, different sections. So we'll go for when x is between minus 1 and 2. And I'm going to include minus 1, but I'm going to exclude 2, because I'm going to include 2 in the next section. I may as well write the whole sections out. Um, that's 2 to 3. And then that's 3 to 4. And I'm going to include 4 in that, just because otherwise 4 is not included anywhere. Okay, so let's do the easy section first. So the flat bit. Right, the equation of that is just going to be y equals minus 4. Um, sorry, I should write f of x equals minus 4. And let's do the linear bit here as well. Um, so the gradient of this is uh, rise is 4, step is 1. So the gradient is 4. Um, and it passes through, let's see, it passes through 4, 0. So let me just do some working out over here. y equals 4x plus c. And if I put 4, 0 into that, 0 equals 16 plus c. Okay, so c is negative 16. And then um, the quadratic part. Um, I can see it's a negative quadratic, um, and it goes through 0, 0, um, which means it's going to be, um, well, the only root of it is 0, which means it's going to be like x plus 0, x plus 0, in other words, just x squared, but it's negative, so it's going to be negative x squared. It might have been stretched as well. Okay, so it might be like minus 2x squared or minus 3x squared. So to check that, I'm just going to see 1 squared is 1, um, and then negative would be minus 1. Okay, so that fits. And 2 squared should be 4, so minus 4. Yeah, it does fit. So this is just minus x squared. Okay, and... I should have written it there, but okay. Oh yeah, that's it. You normally put the domain on the right, don't you? You normally put the f of x on the left and the domain on the right. Uh, you know what, this would get full marks because they know exactly what I mean. Number 12. Make y the subject of this. Okay. So I'll start by squaring both sides. And then um, let's get rid of the fraction. Um, okay, let's expand this bracket. I want to gather all the y's together, so I'm going to take away 16y from both sides. Um, to separate this y, because the y is here twice, I need to factorise it out of it. I'm going to put y on the outside, 3x minus 16. And then to leave the y by itself, I just need to divide by this bit. So that's the answer. Thirteen. 
Um, we've got a semi-completed square. Um, it has three lines here, which means it's an identity, which means that both sides are identically equal. Work out the values of A and B. Um, right. I'm thinking we should expand this side and then compare stuff. Let's do that. So that's going to be x squared minus 10x plus 25 minus a. Okay, so if we compare the x's, um, we've got that and we've got that. So 2a is going to have to equal minus 10. So a is minus 5. And then if we compare the... Wait, where's b? Oh, that's a b. That's not a 6, that's a b. If we compare the um, constants, as in the non-x bits, We've got that there, and we've got that there. So that means B has to equal 25 minus A. Um, A was minus 5, so 25 minus minus 5 is uh, going to be 30. So B is 30. I'm just seeing if the examiner's report says anything interesting, but it doesn't really. Okay. Number 14, last question for this part. Um, write this surdy thing in the form of that surdy thing, where W and K are integers. Okay. Um, so we need to rationalise this denominator. Um, it looks a little bit different from how, you know, in normal GCSE when we have to rationalise denominators. But it's still the same principle. We need to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. And remember, that means that we have to negate the third part and leave the, the non third part the same. So, I'm going to times the top and the bottom by minus 3 root 6 minus 7. Okay, because the third part is 3 root 6, so I'm going to negate that bit. Um, let's put some brackets over here. Okay, so let's times those. So I've got 5 root 2 times minus 3 root 6. So I'm going to times the numbers, which makes minus 15. And I'm going to times the thirds, which makes 12. And then I've got 5 root 2 times minus 7. So that's minus 35 root 2. And on the bottom, I've got 3 root 6 times minus 3 root 6. So 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. And root 6 times root 6 is root 36, which is just 6. Then we've got root 3, uh, sorry, 3 root 6 times minus 7, um, which is minus 21 root 6. And then we've got minus 7 times minus 3 root 6, which is plus 21 root 6. And then we've got minus 7 times minus 7, which is positive 49. So, obviously those two are going to cancel each other out. Um, so I've got minus 15 root 12 minus 35 root 2 over minus 54 plus 49, which is minus 5. Is minus 5? That's good because that's going to cancel. So that's going to make that 3 root 12 plus 7 root 2 because I divided everything by minus 5. Um, 
Right, it doesn't want any numbers on the outside. So, if I take this 3 inside the square root, I'm going to have to square it to compensate. See, normally when you take a number out of a third, like say I was going to simplify um, root 12, I would, um, I would take the 4 out of it, but it would become a 2 on the outside, because I'd have to square root it. So if I'm doing the opposite and putting something back inside, I have to square it. So I'm going to put 9 inside there. Then I'm going to put 49 inside there. I'm not sure why they want it in this weird form, and I don't know my 12 times table. I think it's 108. That sounds right. And that's 98. So that would be the answer, which seems like a really strange, in my opinion, strange format, but yeah. It's correct, I'll just check the mark scheme. Um, let's just see if the examiner's report said anything about that. Um, uh, apparently, um, there was a significant number of students who did not seem to know the standard technique of rationalising the denominator. Um, okay, yeah, and a lot of people, I knew people would do this. Apparently, a lot of people multiplied by 3 root 6 plus 7 because they, they thought that was the conjugate. Uh, which is fair enough, but obviously it's not going to work. Um, there, there were some errors in the most basic arithmetic. For example, in evaluating 9 times 6. Some people can't do 9 times 6, that's awful. The final answer asked for the thirds to be written in slightly unconventional form. Yeah, I thought it was unconventional, it's really weird. Whereas we often require root 108 to be simplified to 6 root 3, this time, it was the other way round, and it caught out some students who, up to that point, had an error-free solution. So, yeah, that maybe got to that point, and then were kind of like, what? You, you want it like this? How do I do that? So, yeah, I can see why they would get stuck on that. Okay, um, that's it for part two. I'll see you in part three.